lovelies and welcome back to my channel. For this year's Halloween look, I decided to do a goddess. But not just any goddess, Nyx, the goddess of the night. But before we begin, let me remind you that subscribing is 100% free, so please click that subscribe button. The YouTube algorithm is not very kind to us small YouTubers, so any like and subscribe is greatly appreciated. Also, make sure to check out my second channel where I have posted the story of NYX. I'll have that video linked in the description box down below. And while you're watching that video, you might as well subscribe to that channel as well. Also, in the comment section down below, please let me know what you will be doing for Halloween this year. Will you be trick-or-treating? Or perhaps a movie night? Or will you be dressing up this Halloween? And if so, what is your costume? All right, without further ado, let's move on to the makeup tutorial. First, we are starting off with this pore filling primer. It's actually called No Pore Bloom by Touch and Soul. And I'm just spreading that all over my face and my neck so that we have a perfectly smooth canvas to work off of. Next, I'm just using my e.l.f. brow pencil in the color taupe to fill in my eyebrows and give them some shape. I wanted this look to be very glowy, so I'm starting off with a base of this Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector. It's a liquid version, and I believe it's in the shade Champagne Pop. I'm mainly using this product in the areas that I typically use my highlighter. Now I'm going in with my foundation. This is the Hello Fresh Oxygen Wow Benefit Foundation. And I'm just using a dense brush first to really push the foundation in and to fill as many pores as possible. And then I'm going to go in with a makeup sponge and smooth out all of those brush lines. I am now using some concealer. I typically use a concealer that is my exact skin tone for blemishes. And then I also use a concealer, which is a little bit lighter than my natural skin tone, just to highlight some of the areas that I want to highlight. And I do have some really stubborn sunspots, so I do go back in with a fine brush and just do some detail work with some concealer just to blend those out and um, camouflage them just a little bit better. Whenever I want a super full coverage, I instead of using a setting powder, I use a powder foundation as my setting powder. So here I am using the Milani foundation powder in the color natural. I wanted to bring some more brightness to my face so I decided to bake with some banana powder from Wet n Wild. This will also help with any of the fallout from our eyeshadow that we will be applying in just a moment. Using my trusty highlight and contour palette by IVY Beauty, I am just contouring my nose and my cheekbones and even my jawline. We will be going back in with a different color later on but this is basically just to map out where the darker contouring powder will be going later on so um, I highly suggest you do this step because it kind of maps everything out and it creates a more of a flawless finish to lift the eyebrows a little bit more I'm using this pinky rose hip-hop um, cream eyeshadow I believe it is right under the brow bone and it's basically just like a concealer and I am just blending it in with my finger it is now time for the eyeshadow so first I'm using the color taupe from my Lorac Pro 1 palette and using that as my crease shade and then I'm using the black shade from the same palette and deepening up the outer corners of the eyes just ever so slightly I'm just building it up um, bit by bit so it doesn't get too heavy-handed. Um, it's easier said than done, but I suggest using a small crease brush to do this. I didn't want my eyeshadow look to look like just a regular smoky eye. I really wanted it to look like the night sky, so I decided to add just a dab of this blue eyeshadow from my Urban Decay Electric palette. The shade is called Chaos and it's probably my favorite shade in this palette. It is a gorgeous vibrant blue, but I mixed just a little bit with some black to kind of deepen the shade a little bit and I'm just adding that all over my eyelid. Here I'm just using a clean crease brush to kind of blend out and diffuse the outer edge just a little bit because it was starting to look a little messy. I decided to sharpen the outer edge just a little bit by using some black eyeshadow and an angled brush and it just gave the eyeshadow just a little bit more shape and a little bit more sharpness which is just what it needed. 
And any excess eyeshadow that I had on that angled brush, I just kind of pushed it towards the crease and blended it out. The key to this look is to blend, blend, and just when you think you're done blending, blend a little bit more. For my brow bone highlight, I am going into my Lorac Pro 2 palette and using the color beige. And then for my inner corner highlight, I'm using this highlighter from Ofra Cosmetics. It's called Rodeo Drive, and I'm concentrating it on my inner corners. And then I slowly blend down on the inner third of my bottom lash line, as well as the top of my eyelid as well, just to kind of create a little blowing effect. For my bottom lash line, I'm just going to mirror what I did on top to the bottom. So on the outermost corner, I'm going to go for my black shadow, and then as it fades inwards, it's going to be more blue. And make sure to blend this out very well because you do want an ombre effect. You don't want it to look very harsh or anything. So I'm just connecting the black to the black on the top and just kind of diffusing all the colors and having them create a beautiful ombre effect. Now it's time for the dreaded wing liner. I'm just using a chubby felt tip liner and it kind of makes it a little bit easier. You get a little bit more control when creating the wing, but just take your time and just map it out bit by bit. Now I'm just brushing away the banana powder, especially around the eyes. Um, I'm kind of dusting away any of the fallout as I go as well. So make sure to use a nice flicking motion so that that eyeshadow doesn't get all smudgy under your eyes. I'm now going in with some black eyeshadow and slowly using that as a contour, um, pretty much exactly where I used my original contour powder. Using the black eyeshadow was quite intimidating, so I decided to use a smaller detailed brush for my cheeks just so I could kind of map out where the contour is going to go. And then I went back in with a bigger, denser brush to blend everything out. And you want to take your time doing this part because it'll just look really harsh if you don't. You just want to take a little bit of black eyeshadow and slowly build it up as you go. I'm again using a detail brush for the nose. You want to take an especially careful and long time doing the nose um, because this is very easy to screw up. So um, just take your time, use very light amounts of black first to contour everything and you can always build up as you need. I didn't want the look to just be black, um, it just looked too dull, so I decided to go in with a beautiful blue shade and create a ombre effect similar to what I created on my eyes, um, but I just wanted a little bit more color and a little bit more dimension. The shade, in case you're wondering, is called Dream and it is from the OPV Beauty London Spotlight Eyeshadow Palette. I wanted my face to be highlighted with what looked like the moonbeam, so I went back into my Urban Decay Electric Palette and used the shade Revolt. I found these face gems on Amazon and I really loved the shape of them. They were moons and stars which went perfectly with my look, but I did not really like the color, um, mainly because it was not going to match the rest of my accessories for this look, so I decided to just paint over them with some eyeshadow actually. Just went over each gem with some of the Hourglass Scattered Light Glittering Eyeshadow in the shade Burnish, which is kind of like a rosy gold color. Now, these gems do come with a sticky back, but what I didn't realize when I was going over them with the eyeshadow was that the eyeshadow got on the clear sticky adhesive and it just looked like a big mess. So I decided to use some eyelash glue and cut out each individual shape and place them on one by one. This was super time consuming, but very worth it. I also decided to add just a little bit of that same rose gold eyeshadow on my cheekbones, just so that my cheekbones matched my little gems a little bit better because it was just looking very, very silver compared to the rose gold on my forehead. I also added some of that rose gold eyeshadow right below my eyes where I will be placing some more of the gems. 
And for a more precise placement of these gems, I highly suggest you use a pair of tweezers. I tried originally to just use my fingers and they would stick to my fingers and get all goopy and sticky and it was getting really frustrating, so definitely use tweezers. I still felt like my eyeshadow was missing just a little bit of something, so I went in with the Stila Liquid Glittering Eyeshadow in Smoky Storm and just placed that right in the center of the eyelid and just blended it out just a little bit and it ended up looking like a starry night sky and it was just absolutely perfect. To define the eyes just a little bit more, I went in with a detail brush and some gel liner. This one is actually from Pretty Vulgar, and I just used some for my waterline as well as my tight line. Now it's time to curl them lashes and add some mascara. I am using the Tarte Big Ego Mascara. I didn't have any black lipstick or a black lip liner, so I just went in with a black pencil eyeliner. Um, this one is by Ali Oop and it's called the Pen Pal and I just used the black one and lined my lips ever so carefully. And then I just used the same black eyeshadow from the Lorac Pro palette to fill in the lips. I really loved the matte black look of the lips but I still wanted to add just a little something extra so I went back in with my Hourglass Rose Gold eyeshadow shade and placed it right in the center of the lips just for a little bit more dimension. I picked out some fun glittery eyelashes. These were I believe from Walmart from their Halloween section last year. And my accessories, which include the crown and my earrings and my necklace, are all from Amazon. They actually all came together, which was really great. The only thing with this crown is that it has to be bobby pinned into place. There are no combs or anything that holds it down, so um, just be aware. The bobby pins are kind of hard <laughs> to use on this crown because it is kind of thick, but I made it work. And as a last minute touch up, I did end up using the Stila liquid eyeshadow that we used on our eyelids right in the center of the lips as well to create a starry night effect. All that's left is for me to put on my starry cloak and the look is complete! So that was it for this Halloween makeup tutorial. I hope you guys enjoy. Pretty much my entire costume came from Amazon. Um, if you would like specific links, then please let me know and I will give you the links or I'll try to remember to put them in the description box down below. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Give this video a big thumbs up and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!